Spectacular snow and ice, it can only be one place. Welcome everyone to Rally Sweden. We are ready to go with our shakedown stage this morning. Snow is unique on the championship. We just get one shot at it here in Sweden and it's looking picture postcard perfect out there this weekend. I'm Bex Williams, ready to chat you through this first run of Shakedown. Alongside me is co-driver Seb Marshall, co-driver and stage end reporter extraordinaire. Morning, Seb. Good morning, Bex. How are we? But ready to go, to be honest. I love a bit of snow and ice. I think everyone loves watching the cars on snow and ice. Like I said, it's just one round of the championship. It's pretty unique. It's special. That's the word I was going to choose, unique. It's, uh, it's a really incredible rally, both to watch, to compete, to, uh, you know, to be a part of. It's, yeah, it's something I, I'd love to see another snow rally, personally. I, I enjoy it so much that, mm. um, yeah, it's a great way to uh, continue the championship as we get ready to begin round two. And of course, it is our reigning WRC champions on the line. First to go at Shakedown, Kalerov and Pera, Ione Haltonen. What really typifies this event? It's the second time we've seen it in this region of Sweden. We're up in Umeå, and it's a very fast rally. Snow is, is fast anyway, but we have a lot of long straights as part of this rally. And Shakedown is pretty highly representative of what we're going to see out there this weekend. It is, yeah. You can see, yeah, obviously, there's, there's been plenty of snow, so there's some nice snow banks lining the road. But, yeah, the, the speed is high all the way through. There's not a huge amount of junctions, um, especially on Shakedown, there's not any. Um, to be found, we believe, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's high speed, Those, the grip that you get from the studded tyres is phenomenal, and uh, you can see on the telemetry here, already over 160 kilometres before he hits the brakes, straight back up to 130, it's, yeah, it, it's phenomenal. The, the speed, you know, walking to the commentary box this morning, we could barely stand up, and yet it's, uh, here they are, dancing on ice. We were a fraction of the speed walking on ice ourselves this morning, but they have the benefit, of course, of the Pirelli studded tyre, just one tyre choice here this weekend for the Rally One Cruiser, and that is that Softer Zero studded snow tyre that they'll all be using. Temperatures at the moment, certainly where we are in the service area, it's just above freezing, but throughout the weekend, which of course you can join us for the entire way on WRC+. Temperatures are going to dip on Friday and Saturday, they won't get above freezing during the day. But it has warmed up a little bit today, so we, there was a little bit of melt certainly here in, in service. It'll be interesting to see how much now in terms of the passes through on Shakedown, what that does. But for Rob and Pera, this event is where it all started last year, really, wasn't it? The win here, a 22-second advantage come the end of the rally. He was on superb form, but he's going to be up against it from a collection of drivers, including orange glass-wearing Thierry Neuville who is keen to get his season. He's on a, you know, a good result in Monty, but he would clearly laugh as they all would to take a win. I think that's it, you know, uh, Thierry left Monte Carlo. I think he was probably a little bit disappointed um, with the end result. Obviously he lost time on that, uh, with that spin on the Thursday night. Never quite was able to match the pace of the Toyotas, but he, uh, yeah, he, he's gone very well in Sweden. The past was a winner of the, uh, the event, but it was based further south. Thierry's, you know, more than capable of, uh, of challenging for the win here again. And um, yeah, he may be a little bit hampered. We, we understand he didn't uh, actually manage a pre-event test suit to illness, so the shakedown will take on extra importance for him this morning. Absolutely, it will. And for Hyundai, you know, all three of their drivers have been on the podium in Sweden. Thierry Neuville, Esa Pekalapi, Craig Breen, of course, who starts his uh, campaign here in Sweden. Back with Rob and Pera then as we are through the red boards. Just over three minutes, three minutes, 0.4 of a second. See him there just uh, using the snow banks lightly to keep the rear end of the car in line. And that's going to be a real feature. Um, I'm sure we'll talk about it a lot more as the weekend progresses. Knowing which snow banks you can lean on, which ones are going to uh, damage the car or, or pull you uh, into them. 
Let's actually see the mix uh, here as well. The start of the stage is a little bit wider, a bit more uh, open. Here, these narrow sections, of, you can see they're very much a cloud their way through. But let's hear what Callie's got to say to Molly Pettit at the stop. Morning, Calla. Back in Sweden, a little bit of damage to the rear right there. Were you close to the snowbank? On this condition, you are, even if you don't want to. It was really, really slippy for us. Uh, there is a small line in the middle of the road, but uh, the rear will never fit in the line on this kind of narrow road, so it will be really tricky to open the road here. The condition is not easy to be first car. And of course he's going to have, well, we start tonight with the, uh, the sprint, but he'll have a full day of that tomorrow on Friday. Yeah, 106 kilometres tomorrow of uh, road to be opened for Calais. And the interesting thing here as well, of course, is we talk about the disadvantage of opening the road, particularly in the morning, but the snow is often in the afternoon also when uh, the lower runners have created the tracks and moved the snow about more. So there is a cleaning effect to be found on the afternoon stages as well. So it's like well, it happened twice by uh, that running first in the road when the conditions are like they are this weekend. Yeah, you've mentioned the snow banks. You can see them visually at either side of the road. There has been quite a lot of snow in the region in the past few weeks. So there are going to be snow bags out there, and it's always a little bit hit and miss. Seb, whether they're soft, whether they're hard, whether there's anything in them, whether you can use them or not. It's, it can be such a lottery, but they can benefit you. Yeah, I mean, they can be your best friend and your worst enemy in different corner to corner, um, as I can attest to uh, on numerous occasions. But yeah, it's um, it's part of the, the skill and I hate to use the word luck, but it's good fortune that sometimes you get away with stuff and uh, just, yeah, you've got to be in that rhythm, in that mode for, to, to have a good result here. Alvin Evans and Scott Martin now then as uh, Thierry Newville completes. Alvin off to a, a superstar in Monty in terms of pace and commitment. It was right there from the very start. Sadly, a puncture Open really hampered his event. And a little bit of damage there you can see to the Hyundai, let's head out to Molly now then and hear from Thierry. Morning Thierry, how are you feeling? It's okay, not great to be honest. Uh, I've been sick all week and yeah, not feeling so good, but we, we're going to be able to, to manage. Yeah, it looks like it's hard to stay away from the snow banks in there. Yeah, very difficult and the snow banks are really, really hard. Um, Obviously, it's quite fast in there. It's a tricky shakedown. I had a clean run through, but uh, yeah, discovering the car, obviously, I had one of my test days cancelled because I was so sick. So um, yeah, it was uh, strange to recover the car with a setting I've never driven so far. Well, we all hope you feel better soon. Yeah, well, I spoke to him last night. You know, we talked about the fact that you know, he missed out on that test day, but he said he was feeling a bit better last night. He did sound pretty rough, exactly the way he sounded today, but obviously not feeling great this morning. It's been a, a week of illness for Thierry Newville. Yeah, and this is the thing, obviously, it's one thing driving a car at record speeds and going about your normal daily business, but you do need to be on a higher level. Obviously, there's a lot of adrenaline uh, when you're driving with a rally car, but yeah, it, it takes it out of you as. Uh, we just saw a little bit of uh, the bodywork on that final uh, corner there from one of the cars as Evans completes eight tenths of a second down on uh, Neville's fastest so far. Yeah, but as Thierry said, and as we can all see, it is a tricky shakedown to uh, to get things started. Oitanak now then, Martin Yareoya. They were competing at home in Estonia last weekend at the Ottawa Rally in a bid to get some vital testing in themselves, but in competition mode, which kind of is the best way to do it. <laughs> Let's uh, cross out then back to the stop control, the snowy stop control. Well, then we've heard from the two in front of you that it's very slippery, very hard snow banks. How did you find it? Yeah, uh, much the same, to be honest. Quite uh, surprisingly slippery, uh, but... Uh... Yeah, other than that, quite okay, but it's not an easy stage, quite narrow. Uh, so, yeah, uh, tricky to, to find the rhythm early on. I'm just seeing there's uh, litters of uh, little bits of carbon fibre across the, across the stage. I'm sure we'll see more of that as more cars come through. But um, Thierry's saying that the snowbanks are, are very hard. I mean, that, again, that means you can, you can 
can lean on them a little bit, but obviously they can do more damage to the the car. And it's a little bits of bodywork doesn't matter. That's yeah, that's they they'll expect to be changing bumpers, replacing them at every service pretty much. But uh, yeah, there's uh, there's always a wonder that sometimes bumps may be a bit more solid to be found inside them. And, yeah, it's uh. It's yeah. a bit of an un a big unknown. Absolutely it is. Big unknown as well for Oik Tanak. He was asked last night when we were all chatting to him, you know, whether he thought he could go out and win this rally. And he said, honestly, I don't know. I don't know where we are in terms of competition. Ask me after the first loop of stages, was his response. But it's looking like it could be a good time here at Shakedown, at least. It is the fastest three so far, the 259.1 for Oik Tanak. Let's switch out now then and join Takamoto Katsuta. Big weekend for him as he steps up to the main team, let's say. A little bit of more pressure on his shoulders, Seb. Yeah, the first time as a nominated point scorer, but as dark as it sounds today, arguably this is probably the surface that Taka has the most experience and uh, affinity with. You know, he spent a huge amount of time in uh, Morning, first. It's very slippery here. Um, being back on snow on ice for a rally driver, how good is that? It's good fun, especially this one. It's, it's actually quite tricky, but uh, it's probably the best stage of the rally. So, uh, yeah, it's good fun to start the rally. A good feeling about the weekend? Let's see. Um, yeah, hopefully we can be a bit more competitive than uh, we were in Monday. You certainly got that sense from him last night after speaking to Oit that he, he felt it was going to be a better weekend than they had in Monte. You talked about Tacker and his experience. He kind of grew up a little bit, didn't he? on snow yeah. when he's first learning his trade behind the wheel and I remember so fondly his win in WRC2 in 2018 that you know the happiness the joy from him there and he had a good result here last year he was fourth overall exactly I think um, well, that's going to be the, the key for Taka is just remembering those uh, his kind of he knows exactly what he needs to do here. The team won't be putting any pressure on him, I, I don't think. That, you know, everyone is aware of the situation that he's now a, a registered scorer for the manufacturer team. But just do what you did last year, and uh, that's, yeah, that's all they'll, they'll want. Him, really. Yeah, I think go out and just keep doing what he's doing and not have that so much in your mind. And I don't it's, think e it's easier well. said than done, isn't it, really? When we're sat <laughs> yeah. here in commentary. <laughs> but this is looking like a, a good time at Shakedown this morning for Taka. Again, you know, OK, we've got a couple of cars coming through, but still. It's a decent time, yeah. I mean, 258.8. The road might be developing, evolving slightly, but this is the thing. At the moment, we just don't know what the characteristic of the, the stages and the rallies going to be in that sense. So, um, yeah, let's keep an eye on it. And, uh... I love all the orange bobble hats you can see here. It's the official Rally Sweden hat. You'll see a lot of that during the weekend, popping up on the stages. It's a Pekalapi and Yane Firm now. Again, a little bit of damage. We're seeing that now from almost every car that's uh, coming through. These snowbanks are not being very forgiving today. Taka, good morning. Fifth on the road, and you've just gone quickest so far on shakedown. Is that perhaps the best place to be? Yeah, uh, well, let's see what's, what's going to happen this weekend. But yeah, stage is a uh, quite nice condition on uh, tomorrow, tomorrow stages. So. Hopefully we have a good uh, weekend, but you know, I just focus my job and I don't need to take any extra pressure. So I just uh, working hard for the team. You didn't find it too slippery in here. Huh? You didn't find it too slippery. Uh, very slippery. Yes, very slippery. but uh, Kai's working well, so it's uh, the snowbanks are still my friend, so it's okay. <laughs> well, there we go. You said they're either your friend or your enemy. For Taka, they're still his friend right now. Yeah. But that's the big question. Where is the sweet spot to be on the road? You know, Calais was very adamant, wasn't he, that, you know, this position is going to be really tough this weekend, being first. OK, he's not ploughing a huge amount of snow, but still, it's incredibly it slippy for him being yeah. first. Yeah, this, uh, it's definitely a daft disadvantage being uh, where Calais is when the road's like this. But, um, yeah, I think you can see the car with, uh, with EPs seems to be sort of pinballing between the banks a little bit in that narrow section, and uh, that's a phenomenal time. Great time on the board. Spoke to Essa Pekka last night. He said stages, you know, in general are in good condition. There's maybe one or two, certainly a section in one on Saturday, which a little bit difficult in terms of the base and maybe gravel coming through on that one. But he was very much looking forward to the weekend. As
does this is Hyundai teammate Craig Breen. It's interesting just talking about the base there. I mean, you mentioned earlier that it has warmed up slightly today. The fact that it's now going to freeze overnight actually might help things. You know, yeah. That's often how we need the road base to develop. It, it, free, it thaws out. Refreezing harder, more compact. So uh, that could be a good thing. Yeah, that's Morning, EP. That's quickest through here on Shakedown. Does the feeling match the time? Yes. Yeah. This time, yeah. Uh, it, it felt quite clean. Uh, for sure, we used the banks here and there, but that's, that's the, the style of the rally. Uh, but the banks are really hard. So uh, I need to watch out also a bit. They are not really flexible at the moment. Is that the case everywhere this weekend? Well, in some stages you have lower banks, but, but mainly quite high, so yeah. Uh, yeah, you need to know where you can lean. Well, and, yeah, knowing where you can lean it is quite the art form, and, as we said earlier, a little bit of a lottery. We've seen great results for, for Craig Breen on snow second here, back in the Citroen days with Scott Martin alongside him. He feels very comfortable on this kind of surface. Yeah, it's um, it's a place where Craig feels at home, and he had victories on uh, the snow rally in the European Championship uh, many years ago now. So yeah, he, he knows what it takes to, to be competitive uh, on this surface. And I think you know, it's, seeing Craig back in the high end of colours, it's it almost seems like life is a year M Sport didn't happen in some bizarre way. It just looks so like a natural fit for Craig, but. He'd be a little bit disappointed with that time. Maybe, uh, maybe a story to tell from. Uh... No hybrid. Ah, there we go. No hybrid. That explains that one. <laughs> but that's uh, better to find it out now if there's any issue and uh, get that fixed. Pierre Louis Lubé, Nicolas Schilsel. Now I was taking a look at co-driver experience at this rally. Um, Nicolas Schilsel, I think it's, this is going to be the tenth time he's made ten appearances here. Scott Martin's on 12, so he just edges him. Is Scott leading? Yes. In terms of the P1 drivers, yes. Morning, Craig. It's great to see you back. What's the feeling like in here? Tricky. Uh, definitely more tricky than what we had on our test. Uh, some, some small issues. I'm, uh, I need to speak to the guys and see. I definitely didn't feel... Uh, I didn't feel the car I had on the test, so uh, let's see if we can work it out now. What sort of small issues? Uh, very small, very, very small. He <laughs> <laughs> doesn't know he gave that away to us. <laughs> yeah, thank you for that clarity, Craig Breen. Very, very small, yeah. very small. So he benefited, essentially, from, from Thierry not having that test day because he, he got an extra one in. But as he said, car's not feeling quite the way it did on the test. But then this is what Shakedown is for, is to... To refine, what, what, if they did find a great testing setup, to make sure that that is absolutely there well, the, ahead of the weekend. This is the thing with the, the danger with testing is that you can end up setting up a car just for the road that you're testing on, and yeah, that's far, four, five, six kilometres. The rally is three over 300. You know, the, the little different. So you've always got to have that balance in mind when you are developing a setup, and, and maybe there's some little nuances in this tech, in this shakedown stage. So think, actually, I need something slightly different for the car. So. So, uh, yeah, the final sort of tweak to the final tune. There's another hit to the bank for Pierre Louis. 7.2 seconds down on Lappi. It is good now to welcome back Lorenzo Batelli to the championship. And to see the Toyota Yaris in a completely different livery. Yes, the first time we've seen the hybrid Rally 1 Yaris, uh, not in their corporate colours. I think the last time we saw any Yaris was uh, Lappi in Finland, I think, 2021. Yeah. Before that, Grand Ole in Sweden. So, yeah, it doesn't happen often, but it's great to see. Yeah, Louis, good morning. And I guess we should say welcome to Umeå, your first time here. How are you finding it so far? Yeah, it's OK. Uh, not a very clean run on my side, but, uh, yeah. I was a bit hesitating and uh, not very keen, but uh, let's uh, try again. And the aim for the weekend? Yeah, try to learn maximum uh, this type of road, take experience and try to do a clean run. There we go, that's the target then for Pierre-Louis this weekend.
Lorenzo, of course, with traditional co-driver Simone Scatelin alongside. Lorenzo wasn't here last year, but he did make an appearance at the Arctic Rally a couple of years back. So uh, a little while since he's been on snow. And again, a driver who, like we saw last year, you know, he popped back in maybe for the occasional event. Maybe a bit of a fuller program this year from him. Yeah, it'd be great to see him. He's such a fantastic character to have around the service car on the stages. And uh, he'll, uh, he'll be out to just enjoy himself. That's, uh, that's Lorenzo's main priority, I think, isn't it? And uh, increase his speed as the weekend goes on, as he learns this car. You know, it's, it's the first time I think the first time driving the hybrid car for Lorenzo. So, uh, he was in hybrid last year, was he not? That's right, this year, sorry. Yeah. And there we go. Lorenzo completes. He is, as you say, he's quite the character, but you know, one thing about Lorenzo is the, the constant need for improvement stage by stage. Mm -hmm. Now, we switch to WRC2 and registered for points this time around and starting that WRC2 campaign is Oliver Solberg. He was, of course, in a Rally 2 car in Monty, but not scoring points for the championship. Some brilliant times from him there. And now we're on a surface which is very much home territory for him, although we already have a, a little bit of damage. View. We're getting a great view of the snowbanks here. Let's get a great view of Lorenzo Batali, though, instead of the stock control. Lorenzo, good morning. It's great to see you back. I think you might win the coolest looking car here this weekend. <laughs> Hi, thank you. Nice to see you again, guys. Now I am super happy. Uh, super happy to be here with the Toyota and I want to enjoy this rally, so the condition is good, so looking forward to it. Yeah, Oliver Solberg there, WRC2. Again, an incredible lineup of drivers. When you look down the entry list, uh, who we've got Oliver Solberg, Oli Christian Vaby, Emil Lindholm, defending champion, starts his campaign this weekend. Tim Sunanen, Hutenen, Linema, Egon Kor, Grisins here, Pyri. I could go on it's because like, we've got so many. It's a, yeah, almost the ultimate list, isn't it? Just perhaps missing out on the. Uh... The likes of Johan Rossell, who we saw in, in Sweden, but he'd openly admit this probably isn't his favourite surface. So, yeah, it's it's going to be a fantastic battle. I, really, I wouldn't like to call who's going to win the rally, but equally, it's just as hard to pick a WRC2 winner at this stage as well. But definitely, this man will be right up there. He did seem very, uh, very comfortable quite quickly in, in Monte Carlo in the new Skoda Fabia Evo. So, um, yeah, he'll, uh, he's had a lot of chance to test the car as well before this, but... Some, uh, some hand signals there, clearly uh, I love things it. to work on. He's so expressive, Oliver. You can always tell from the body language exactly yeah. how he's feeling in the car. And immediately, as soon as he's crossed that flying finish, he is giving a full analysis to Elliot as to how that car feels. And I'm sure Petter will be watching that as well and uh, getting some feedback. He'll understand these, uh, these hand movements very well. The Volkswagen then of Oliver Christian Baby, Torstein Eriksson alongside. Again, another quick driver on this surface. Yeah, and uh, this is obviously... Oh, we'll just Oliver briefly and then uh, back to Oliver Christian. Morning, Oliver. You've been playing with those snowbanks, haven't you? Very slippery, very slippery. But I, I, I uh, pushed a bit too hard in a few places. It was a bit more loose than I thought. Uh, but uh, yeah, car is working okay. You just need to fine tune, of course. You know, it's the first time with the car on this surface, so just need to fine tune the car. But it works relatively well. But I know how quick baby will be in the polo, so uh, I need to need to get the set up correctly and a good feeling, and we will see. Yeah. So um, OC, as you mentioned, with with Torstein Eriksson alongside this uh, this weekend, to of course was with Andreas Mikkelsen last year, but um, they did a, a local event in Norway last weekend, were victorious on that as their kind of warm-up test slash rally. So, um, yeah, they've got coming into this confidence high. Obviously, he hasn't been rallying as much last year. He was doing a bit more RX uh, rally cross, but, um, yeah, I mean, he had a great battle with Andreas last year, so uh, I'm sure he's going to push Oliver. Yeah, well, Oliver's already referenced him this morning, so let's see what the time will be in comparison. Oliver's time is 3.05.1. And it's a 3.08.6 on the first pass of shakedown for Vaby.
It is good to see him back, though, as you said. He did a bit of a mixture of things last year, and we saw him in Rallycross. But it is great to see him back here. <laughs> a very happy Emil and Reta Hamelainen there, who are delighted to be underway now in their first competition within WRC2 this year. What a super successful season they had last year. Outright wins Sammy in WRC2. Morning, it's great to see you back in WRC, and I'm sure the rivalry is on between you and Oliver Solberg, especially this weekend. Absolutely. It's going to be an um, amazing fight. Uh, you know, last year, the fight with Andreas was uh, was really cool, and I think it's going to be... Um, it's going to be exactly the same uh, this year also, but um, for sure there is uh, there is a lot of fast drivers there out there, so um, it will be interesting, but we are really looking forward. And how is Torstein doing? Ah, uh, he's doing an uh, amazing job, so uh, big thanks to Andreas for letting me borrow him this, this weekend. Just borrowed, yes. just borrowed. <laughs> uh, yeah, so back to uh, to Emil and Reiter last year at this event. It wasn't such a, a, a glory start to their season, was it? You know, when you look back across the an incredibly consistent season in 2022, outright wins in WRC2 Open, wins in the junior category as well. But Sweden did not get off to a good start. Friday morning, they went off the road pretty early on. They lost quite a bit of time. Yeah, he kind of made it made it hard work for himself from then on. And, and I think that's probably the mark of their championship for me, that they just they had that difficult beginning, but built and built and built yeah. all the way through the season. So it was like, wow, they're actually contenders coming into the last few rounds. But it looks like it's been a little bit untidy here, but Scrappy hitting a few of those banks and uh, maybe need to neaten things up a little bit. It's going to be quick, though, I think, this time. Maybe, uh, maybe not, as, not as quick as uh, all of us. But yeah, you're right. It did look a little bit scrappy, but they're through on the first round. It's 3.08.8. So slightly slower than Baby, slower than Solberg. Solberg's time of 3.05.1, the fastest within WRC2 right now. Yeah, Rich was looking a little bit surprised with uh, with something there. So uh, we'll see if Emil's got anything to uh, specific to say at the end of the, at the stop line. Another man starting his championship assault this weekend. <laughs> Morning, Emil. The champions are back in business. How does it feel? I go into a slippery. Slippery, but then again, some places there is grip, so it's. Uh, yeah, should, should be able to go faster, but uh, but yeah, we we are here having fun. I think. Uh, if the weather stays uh, hopefully below zero, then we'll have fun with you. If it does, and it is forecast too, the next two days should be below freezing. And as Seb said earlier, what the beauty of, of this event is that you kind of have a little bit of a thaw and then a refreeze. It's kind of, you know, the, the, the perfect conditions and that's in the building weeks to, to rally sweep, that's what they go through. Exactly. So this is a good ice layer at the base. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll always see some gravel appearing in you know, corners. That's just the nature of the way these tyres are. Well, we're ripping stud. through it with studded yeah, exactly. tyres. I mean, but it's not, uh, I mean, it's nowhere near what, uh, what we had a couple of years ago, thankfully, where it was a gravel rally. So, um, yeah. The, the, conditions, uh, the drivers will always say could be better, could be more more suited, but I mean, it's still a fantastic place to rally regardless of what the conditions are like when it's this, this sort of style. But take me through 308. So, uh, benchmark from Solberg's looking really strong yeah, so it is. far. Very much so. So, WRC2 is where we're at right now as we switch to another Finn, Yari Hootenen behind the wheel. And switching cars back into a Skoda Fabia this weekend and this season, I believe. Striking livery on this one. Striking against the white snow, certainly. Oh, yeah, and uh, the helmet to match as well. Morning, Samo. It's your first time here in Umeå. I see that you're testing the limits a little bit with the snow banks this morning. Yeah, the stage was quite narrow, so we were hitting a bit of the snow banks, and uh, I think that's the that's the thing here in this rally. If we if we are on the limits, then then that's that's normal. I like that line. If we're on the limits, then that is normal to be touching the snow banks, especially on this narrow shakedown stage. Yari Hootenen, certainly another contender 
out there for the top spot this weekend. Yeah, I mean, he's <clears throat> he's gone well in the past. He's only had this, this first sort of clutch of five, six drivers, all the, uh, the Scandinavians and Nordics, and yeah, they, they're all very much at home on these conditions. There's nothing to split them in in terms of experience, really. It's just going to come down to, as Tamer was saying, who's, who can get find the limit and not go over it the best as the weekend progresses. But, uh, yeah, I can't wait to see a battle in WRC2. See there, there's a bit of a line beginning to become more apparent. The darker shade on the outside of the corners as the car sort of loaded the weights on the outside, the studs are digging in. Just like I say, that's more that the snow has been cleared and the uh, you can just beginning to see the ice beneath. We'll hear from Yari in a few moments with, of course, Molly Pettit, who's been interviewing the drivers, all the drivers for us at the stop control. Gail Glinema now with James Morgan alongside again this year. A striking orange car. Orange seems to be the colour this year, doesn't it? Or is it yellow? <laughs> get some glasses back. <laughs> I'd say it's orange. Oh, his helmet's orange, so we'll go with orange, yeah. <laughs> Matching that. Another driver who used home event in Estonia as a bit of a test on the weekend. Let's hear from Yari. Morning, Yari. It's been a while, and now you're in the Skoda. What are the targets for the weekend? Uh, so I try to try to try as fast as possible. So let's see what we can do. Is, is this the most fun surface you know? Yeah, I like it. Always, so, uh, now it feels quite difficult. So I don't know. We have to try something. Again, Georg was, was strong on snow when we saw him last year. And I think it was an interesting season for him in 2022 because, again, he was trying to do as many events as possible. So we saw him on WRC events, we saw him in ERC, local events at home. He's just really trying to accelerate the knowledge and time behind the wheel. Yeah, that experience of uh, using the driving the car in different conditions, different surfaces, that's just the way that you... Fast track it, but you have to build up that uh, that level of knowledge. Um, so when you find these new uh, scenarios, you're a bit more better equipped to deal with them. And and yeah, he's he's had a, a good strong progression throughout last year. Finish 20, right six minus tight. He was uh, fastest of the rally two cars on that warm up rally you spoke about back home. So uh, yeah, we'll take some confidence from that. Very. Yeah, it's a 313.6 then for Linema. Really fucking difficult, isn't it? Narrow. Ooh. Apologies for that, but obviously a pretty tricky stage as James Morgan was just summing up for us there. We'll hear from them both. Well, hear from certainly Georg with uh, with Molly. We've heard from James already. <laughs> <laughs> We've had his summation of the stage. We have. Slippery was the, the, the adjective I took out of that one. Yeah. <laughs> It's been a while since we've seen you. We're now in a different car. How's it going? Yeah, it's going well. We're, uh, we're quite happy with it. And the target this weekend? Uh, we'll have to see. It's a very, very strong entry, but uh, we'd love to get our first podium, so hopefully we can do it. Let's take a look at the results then from the shakedown stage. Run one, Essa Pekalapi with the fastest time with Taka 1.7 behind. Then Tanak, Neuville, Rob and Pera, Evans, Breen and Lube. Oliver Solberg with the fastest WRC two time on the board so far. Tammy Sunin and just behind then Baby, Lindholm, Houghton and Georg Linema. And Lorenzo Batelli who rejoins us within the WRC for this super snowy run at Rally Sweden. That's the way things stand then. After the first run of Shakedown, we are going to be heading down to the service park to catch up with our crews there. Yeah, here we go. The fans are out in full force. Of course they are. It is Rally Sweden and the fans absolutely love it. Well, as our commentators just said, welcome to the service park. Myself, Kiri Blore and Julian Porter here for the rest of the weekend to take you through the snowy tracks of Sweden. Well, good morning, Julian. What did you make of Shakedown? Lappy through fastest, kind of representative of the rally? 
it's representative of the conditions that we've had over the last 24, 36 hours, because it has really warmed up. It's been minus 10s, 12s, but now it's hovering around zero, plus twos in places yesterday afternoon, minus fours yesterday morning. So it is meant to be minus overnight, but what that means is the first cars on the road, potentially the road will break up a little bit, and then uh, it, it gives a bit better performance to the cars further back, which is what Lappy and things like you can see from that shot there, that this was full snow in here on the ground on Tuesday when we came in here. Not deep, but there was a full complete so white layer. So melted, it's now melted, but like you were saying, overnight, we're going to get those minus temperatures, which means it's going to freeze, which could add a whole lot more jeopardy to the conditions. Well, well no, it, it, it actually messes it up. They need those, they don't want the fluctuating temperatures. They, they want the minus 10s, 12s all day and then lower at night, you know? So what the, what the driver, particularly like Rob and Pera wants first on the road, is he wants a, a, a solid ice base on the road. We, we don't need the snow. We just need the ice. A compact the lot snow of ice makes to go it fast. look pretty. The snow makes it look very pretty, but it's the ice that the drivers want for the for the tyres to grip in. Uh, and the snow banks yeah keep them on the road if they go wide, which I've got a feeling looking at the state of that shakedown, there could be a few people off this weekend. <laughs> but no, it, 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 it's it's all about the ice. It's not necessarily about the snow. The snow makes it look pretty but it's about the ice and for those tyres to grip into. And the thing is, if it keeps melting with the snow on the top, it starts to crush down <laughs> and break up and then it's messy and then you start to get a cleaning line like you do on a conventional gravel rally. So you are better off right now in the conditions we have being a little bit further back than being the first or the second car on the All road. All right, so adding quite a lot of jeopardy to who's got the best road position and what are the conditions going to be like? Well, it will all unfold in front of your eyes over the next four days. We've got stages coming thick and fast, stages tonight. So the first of which is going to be at uh, 7 o'clock tonight will be on air at 6 with the opening ceremony and then 8.15 till 8.30, 2 till 8 tomorrow. It's a, a repeated loop in the afternoons in the morning, same with Saturday and then Sunday it is the power stage and the stages before to complete off Rally Sweden and we'll be finding out who's got caught out by those conditions and what exactly they were like well I hope you'll be joining us for a full weekend of rally action as Julian says it is all about the ice so are you ready for the action it'll be coming a bit later on the first of which we'll be back on air with you for at six o'clock see you then